people. Oh yes, we're doing that podcast thingy. Okay, right, I'm Jan. I'm Sharon. And we're menopausal friends living here in France and we plan to share with you our lives, loves and laughter, as the saying goes. There's always lots of that. We'll be discussing many subjects and also just being us. Enjoy. Woohoo. Hello, welcome to this week's podcast. I'm Jan, in case you didn't know. And who are you? I'm sorry, I forgot to speak. <laughs> That's Sharon, who's forgotten herself. I was reading, sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, so let's do as we usually do, but t before we do start, we are going to be touching on memories, aren't we? TV memories from when we were children. So we'll be talking about that today. I think the UK people will probably remember most of them, but some of them are American. So we'll, we'll see. So what sort of week, or not even week, what have you been doing lately? Because we're not doing weekly anymore, so... Um, no, no. I can't remember what I did last week, Jan. Well, what about the week? Before? You can't remember last week at all? No. I can tell you this week. Oh, it is this week, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I can, so we had two good walks, didn't we? Oh, new, God. new areas. Is, is that the right word, good? Long. <laughs> Longer than usual, but very good for us. It was very good. So we went for a walk in the Mayenne area, didn't we? Which is our nearest big town, I suppose you'd say. Yeah. Because um, Jan had an appointment, and then we walked. It was by the river, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm not sure. It, was it just a big lake, or was it the river? I'm not sure. It must come from the Mayenne, I think. But yes. I don't remember it running off somewhere, so no. maybe it's just no. fed but, by the river somewhere. Yeah, but we'd looked at it from the car a few times and thought, yeah. we should pop down there and have a look. So we did. It was mm. quite good, wasn't it? Oh, it was lovely. Really, um, it was nice to have a green space like that in the town. Yes. And the other one we did was in saint luc de mm -hmm. um, which is about a couple of miles away. If yeah, that, I can't remember yeah. what it is in miles or kilometres, to be honest. Yeah. It's literally not even five minutes drive, is it? No. So. And there's an abandoned railway line there. Um, it is abandoned, but it is used, isn't it? Yes, but not by trains. Yeah, not by trains. It's the, um, I think I might have even put a, had a video up before about it, uh, about the Velo Rail, Velo Rail. Yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. Velo or Velo, but... Yeah, so it's, the track is used for that, and there's quite a few of them over France, isn't there? Yes, yeah, so you, if you go on that, then you're riding bicycles on a little contraption, mm. aren't you? Which is really fun. And if you go on that, you are probably mad. <laughs> it's quite hard work, but if you're a cyclist, I think it's probably... I wouldn't say easy, because yeah. you're not just fun. cycling yourself, are you? Cycling possibly up to four people. Yes, yeah. So it's, uh, it's, uh, but it is good fun, yeah. A lot of people just walk here or walk their dogs on it or cycle next to the rail, don't they? Mm. Just, we well, we, I'd sort of made the suggestion to do it because it was fairly flat and the walks near to us are, well, to us, quite hilly, mm -hmm. which we do need because we do need to get our heart pumping, but sometimes it could be quite hard. But it was surprisingly hard anyway, wasn't it? it although it was flat, we did walk for longer. Yes. So yes. We did, at the end of it, we did feel like our legs didn't belong to us, didn't No, it's quite hard work. No, but we're really pleased we've done it, and we will do it again. Yes. I um, did record the walk, so we've got a bit of it on film, but it won't, it won't be us chatting, it'll just be music. Mm. But if I can't watch. But yeah, so you, you've had, a, what else you've got? you had Julie staying? I've had on Julie off staying, for a couple of weeks. yeah, on and off for the last two weeks. Julie's been doing lots of carpentry in the house. She's fitted lots of um, skirting boards for me because my house didn't have any at all. And she's done some fixing of locks and doors and odd bits and on the chicken coop. Oh. But she's now making three old window shutters into a headboard. Which Very is, inventive. Which is looking really nice, isn't it? Mind you say that, it's not Really, Julie, Julie hasn't invented the idea. You want you had the decision to make it, hadn't you? Yes, yes. I saw it somewhere else. I yeah. finished it from somewhere else. But it's looking good, actually. Yeah, it's just really different. Yeah, so that, that's good. But uh, Max is coming back to pick her up today, so they'll go home 
later this afternoon. Mm. Um, yeah, so uh, oh, I went swimming for the first time for a long yes. time. I've been talking about this for who knows how long. I thought it was been since COVID, but you must have been since COVID. I've only been to the swimming baths two or three times since COVID. All oh, right, I've so you have been. Yes, but, yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't think you had. But right. I wasn't going regularly like mm. I perhaps used to before. I had some little swims on holiday, mm. including one where I just swam to the bar. Yes. <laughs> Which was very nice. Are you saying that? You've mentioned that before. So was that one of those pools with a bar in it? Yes. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, I've never been to one yeah. of those. You should go to that place in Tenerife. Yeah. So, yes. Um, so I did a proper swim, up, up and down swim, and I managed 16 lengths. Did you find it a, a struggle or was it okay? Well, since I had my second knee done, mm. I've been struggling to do the breaststroke. You know, it's just getting those muscles yeah, moving again, when isn't I swam in the sea on holiday. But I think the problem was my arms are still going at the speed I used to be able to swim at. And your legs hold catch up. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> really weird. So I think I was Skype. Woof, woof. I'm doing the breaststroke here. Woof, woof. And my legs were like, I can't do this I was going to say, well, your legs are behind going, wait, wait for us. <laughs> so I realised this time that if I um, slowed my arms down, my legs could keep up. Right. Oh, yeah. So I managed to do quite well, a bit. Just a bit like that with keep fit, isn't it? It's getting your arms and legs to coordinate. It's yes. the same, yeah. same sort of yeah. thing. I just think my legs weren't used to doing that kind of frog movement yeah. since I'd had my knee yeah. replaced. So it's, so. Yeah, it's, it's the same movement with legs and arm, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, the breaststroke, yeah. Yeah, so I was pleased I did that. But it yeah. did mean by the time I got to chair fit yesterday morning... Mm. I was cream crackered. Yeah, um, it's, it's been a tiring week because, again, because we've as we've told listeners before, we haven't been able to do a lot because of the weather. I mean, we could be doing the exercise at home, but we're not motivated by that, are we? We need to be like going to somewhere or yes. being with someone to yes. do that. Neither of us have got the space really in our house to do the exercises in our living rooms, really, have we? Not without knocking All stuff the over. And yeah, the motivation. So mm. my motivation to get you go swimming was because I was on my bike, and then you said, oh, "I'm thinking." Oh no, I said, "I said let's go for a walk," and you said, "I'm, I'm thinking about thinking going about swimming. Going swimming." And I said, "Well, then do it. It will be I, good for there you." There was also a delay because I hadn't shaved my armpits <laughs> since last summer. That's a definite. Yeah, it's a. Not. I don't suppose all women worry about it. But no, not all women. Oh, I, I think I would it. be and conscious of it. I don't think it. a lot of French women worry about it. Oh, really? You noticed that, did you? Mm. Yes, but... So doesn't that make you think, why do I worry about it? It does, but I still do. Yeah. Yeah. Silly, isn't it? Cause it is. You, you're probably under the water and no one's going to look anyway. No. And, and my legs as well. Yeah. You'd think the hairs would slow you down because swimmers do shave everything off, don't they, for, for the extra I speed? Don't, I don't think for my 16 lengths of breaststroke <laughs> that was going to be a big worry. <laughs> Your legs might have worked better with no hairs on them. I could have gone really quickly if it wasn't for my hairy armpits. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might, it might be. It might be a bit of, bit of resistance under the armpits, those hairs. Uh, it may have been holding me back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the problem was. Oh, dear. Right, so oh, you've done dear. your swim, we've done our walks, and we've... I did yeah, chair fit. Yesterday we did chair fit on... Especially me, I was very, very tired, and yeah. I just couldn't. It's not like me to not get me coordination. I'm usually all right. Mm. But having said that, for some reason, it was something in the air. Whether it was the moon the night before, <laughs> we were but all quite, a four, quite a few of us were out of sync, weren't we? And yes. just could not get going. At That's one funny. point, I was I was sat next to the uh, instructor. I didn't really think anything of it because I just I'm quite vocal with my pain <laughs> I'm suffering. And <laughs> afterwards, she said, "I thought you were giving birth." <laughs> I said, so did I. There's a lot of... <laughs> yeah, from Jan. <laughs> my, especially my right leg. I really struggle with that. And I, I think I said to you, that I think that right hip is definitely dodgy. So it, it's not supporting me enough, I suppose. But it's muscle, really. Yes. I can't get that right leg to lift as easy without pain. And Val says, don't do it. But the amount of aches and pains I get these days, I wouldn't be doing anything at all. So I've got to do something to get those muscles you know, working and get them strong because yeah. the left side is not as bad. No, no. And I, I don't know, but it, uh, but it's good to do it. We know we need to do it, and despite, as I say, sometimes it stops me sleeping. If I remember to rub my gel in before I go to sleep, I'm okay. 
So, and I've, I've had appointments, I've had my yearly mammogram, which obviously I do, it's not, it's not always yearly here, it's depending on your situation, obviously yeah, with me it's, it's yearly. Yeah, every two for me. Yeah, that's right. But then I'm a lot younger than you. Oh, shut up, a lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> and it just coinc coincidentally, it was the same within a few days of my daughter having hers done as well, because when I, when I got my breast cancer, it they did say to mention it to my girls, mm -hmm. so I did mention it to them, mm -hmm. and the two eldest are now having regular uh, mammograms, so it's it's good because I never, my no, my mum never told me, almost never told to tell me, so lucky I was in France and got it sorted. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, then oh Sunday we had played ca cards, didn't we? we had a did. couple of card games. Yeah, we did. And Sharon slaughtered us, but not by as much as well, used to. Well, no, you're, you're improving all the time. And it's only that game and a couple of others. There's some of those new French card games that mm. have been introduced into our repertoire. Mm. I'm not so good at. You, you do pick it up quickly, though. I mean, I, mm. I only, I'm only playing it now because I've played before, but it still takes me a couple of rounds to get back into it. Get your rhythm going. It's yeah. a bit like my breaststroke. Yeah, exactly. And we've, rhythm. oh, we've had, we had, last week we had a coffee over an hour bar with Adam and Mark. Oh, we did, didn't we? So it's always we nice are, to catch up yeah. with them. And, and I had lunch with, yes, more, because they? we didn't want yeah. to give them their custom. I went for lunch with Adam and Mark on Monday in Bagnol de Lawn in Le Café de Paris, mm -hmm. which sounds probably posh than it is, but it's mm -hmm. quite, it's actually quite a nice restaurant because it's quite, I'd say Art Deco inside, it's oh, really, right. and you'd expect to be paying a lot more money for your food because of just the way it feels, but it was really good portions for a really reasonable yeah, price. Yeah, so. Bagnol is a little upmarket compared yeah. to the rest of us, isn't it? It definitely is because it's a spa town, I think. Yes, it's got some nice hotels, isn't mm. it? Shops with very expensive older lady clothes in. Got quite a lot of um, yeah, older lady clothes. It's <laughs> funny, isn't it? But, uh, but they've got gift shops. They've got chocolate shops. They obviously belongeries. One thing you don't find there, I don't think, is like a second-hand shop. It's just too posh for that. And well, I might be wrong. No Unless you call thing. antique shops and second-hand <laughs> shops, because <laughs> yes, I, I think they've got one of those. Other than that, it's um, no, no an ice cream shop or anything like that. Supermarkets outside the town, isn't mm. it? So, Not yeah, even it's, a little local grocery it's definitely, if you went there, it has the touristy feel to mm -hmm, it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But it's got, like, pedlos on the lake next to the casino and everything, and it's just a lovely place to walk. Whenever we have visitors, which is very rare for us, we do tend to end up taking them there at some point. Yes. And you've yes. done the same, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have, yeah. No. yeah. And obviously last week I'd forgotten, I, well, no, it wasn't last week, it was this week just gone was this Tuesday, wasn't it? I did my interviews, or I interviewed... So you did? I interviewed Ursula, and I interviewed the lady, Elise, who runs the epicerie. So it was interesting to talk to her. It's not on the same vein as all the others of living in France, because obviously she's French, and it, but it's just nice to talk to her and how she runs mm. the shop, and manages mm. the shop, mm. and a bit of the story behind it. And one thing I forgot to mention in the in the interview, which I thought I might mention now, is they were talking about when they built the epicery and it was all basically bare walls and they started to get, they found this bit that didn't look quite right and they took this stone out and inside that stone was a baby's shoe and some hair. Oh. And apparently that's a tradition in the north of England. And I never knew about that. Is it a memorial? I don't know. To, uh, it's, I don't know if it's luck, child, good luck or? to the building. I, I, and I, again, I should have probably researched that. Oh, but I people, I, I know that. people will re research it, especially Renee. As long as it's not a whole baby. But no, yeah, it's a tradition. I think she oh. said in the north of the country, because Ursula mentioned it as well. Oh. Yeah, a baby shoe and some baby hair in the wall of the building. Good luck or something. Yeah. Oh. So that was it. Very interesting. Because we should do that to our buildings. Well, I'm not going to have a baby just to do that. Come on, what's... And I'm not going to start taking this place apart. You've just seen the renovation video. <laughs> Maybe when you get round to building on the spaceship. Yeah. One thing I wanted to just touch on, but the uh, last podcast that went up was the menopause one. Mm. So I just wanted to talk about... People really enjoyed. 
Do, yeah, just to, to touch on some of the comments, actually, I'll go back to uh, this one lady, Kelly, who's got her own YouTube channel called Garden Discovery, because we talked about the fact that we don't really wear makeup and stuff no. now during that menopause. Where, and she says, I dread having to put makeup on on my days of work. And the worst part is preparing to do a YouTube video. And I said to her, that's the last thing I think about doing is putting makeup on for gardening. And I know she's doing a YouTube video, mm. but to me, if you're gardening, well, you wouldn't be putting makeup on. But then maybe if you're a little self-conscious. Yeah. Because I think that's what we were saying about people that wear makeup. Are they doing it because they're a bit self-conscious? Yes, yeah, it depends how people like to present themselves. Mm. And I do, I do, in some ways, I do, when I remember, think back, I do remember wearing makeup, especially at work, because I was self-conscious, so I do get it. Mm. It's just now it's hard to think in the same way. I've just, my ways have just changed. Yeah. Another one was Tina. She said she, she's been going through it for 16 years. Wow. Um, never been on HRT or anything. She just got on with it. And um, so she just obviously thanked us for the chat. She reckons we were better than any doctor she knows. It's very interesting, so we'll take that. Then Liz, she's, Liz is in Australia. She is a Brit, though. She, I remember the menopause as a very rough couple of years. I had a hysterectomy at 42, and it was due, it was due to medical necessity, and six months later started menopause. Mm. So that's, that, to me, sounds very young, <coughs> but it's not uncommon, is it? No, no. I took HRT for just over a year, uh, as she was still... a working full-time nursing so in that situation you can understand why as well because it's a function at work sometimes as we were saying yes. it's not always accepted that you're in menopause is it no she reckons she's 10 years older than us i bet it doesn't show she doesn't sound like she is she's very <laughs> sounds like she's very fit compared to us she does as for walking and having leg pain at night she found it's better to do this is where she puts us to shame she does stretching exercises or yoga after swimming or walking, or, a, or when she used to do a seven-hour shift. It doesn't even enter her head, does it, to do that? No, no, sometimes that at chair fit, Val will say, don't forget, you know, you could do this every day at home. Mm. We, all, we go, yes, Val, that's mm. a good idea, we don't do it. Well, it's the one, she, the couple of them, she says, do this before you get out of bed. Mm. Yes, Val. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So now, she said, uh, before she goes to bed, even now, many years later, I still find it better to switch off the TV at night and her computers and a tablet or phone about an hour before she goes to bed and then do some meditation or reading before she goes to sleep. Now, you, your meditation is watching a, like a serial killer or something, isn't it? Yes. And you might read, might be <clears throat> sometimes. I very rarely read in bed. I can't get comfortable in bed right. to read. I find that quite difficult. Yes, I've watched either uh, Forensic Files or mm. Seconds from Disaster I'm on at the moment. You say, what, what happens if you, you're listening to that? Obviously, you fall asleep probably before it finishes. So do you have to then find where you were for the next night? or I don't care. Oh, OK. A lot of them I know so well. Oh, yes, I suppose so, if you've watched them yeah, a few times. Yeah, sometimes they start matter. and I'm dozing, I think, oh, yeah, that, that's the husband, he did that, and he put her, her body in the wood shredder. Yeah, kind of and thing. I think that's what it is, isn't it? Because you know it, you know it's boring, it's also, because you know what's going to happen. It's also his voice, because there's other people on YouTube who will say, mm. is anyone else fall asleep to this guy's voice? Yeah. Mind you, I had someone say that to me at the, the start of YouTube, and I could never understand why. I think that was on the other channel. One was that me an insult? Or a... <laughs> no, she was just saying that she found my voice soothing. Soothing? Yeah. Okay. Mm, I, have to, I don't know if Duncan finds it very soothing. <laughs> One I keep listening to recently is uh, he's on YouTube and he's Dan Jones. I think he's a Brit. Um, and he's got 400 bedtime stories for adults. And some of them are absolute nonsense. And I could be just about going off to sleep and he'll say something ridiculous. And I've said to Sharon before, I think he says it to catch you out. Are, are you actually asleep sort of thing? Because you think, what? What did you just say? But he's got, a, he's got a, say, a soothing voice. He speaks very slowly during his stories. And mm. I get, get to sleep without fail. That's if great, I'm in the wrong, it? if I'm in the wrong frame of mind when I go to bed, he might irritate me and I might put music on instead, but it's very rare. So, it, you know, it's good. I mean, last, there's like, 
magic stories and stories about fairies and that but so they're all about grown-ups and he does some short hypnosis ones as well so he's in he's into hypnosis and therapies and all that sort of thing so yeah so Dan I've, Dan Jones I just found him yeah so when I'm listening to him it goes it goes there's gaps between his sentences sometimes and it can, it can be that long that I think he's put himself to sleep oh he's one of cats yes I think I, I did see that but I've not looked into I might, it I give that a try because I'm, I'm I won't pretend that some of the things I listen to at night are so good. good for my brain they do <laughs> they influence my dreams as well so sometimes when I read a write a dream down read it out yeah. here I can tell that that's yeah one of the stories I'll be listening to he's got integrated into the dream yeah I don't know what I don't think it was anything to do with his stories but I, all I can remember about last night was crying in my sleep and getting very frustrated again I was lost I'm always lost yes. in my dreams anyway back to Liz um, she said about a lot of ladies have restless legs or difficult difficult yet getting to sleep due to other too active mind well again I don't know if that's the restless legs no. because of that I think no. it's just I've got an active mind yes I mean the restless leg problem. is just due, yeah. due to yeah. what I would say too much exercise but we need to do it so you basically just need to adjust your lifestyle, like she says, about learning to relax and unwind and being less hectic in the evening. Well, I can't say I'm ever that hectic in the evening. I'm being no. very lazy in the evening, really. I'm not a switcher off, and my mind never switches off. So that's why I have trouble getting to sleep, Really? I think. Yeah. yeah. She's saying it because she's in Queensland, Australia. The very different um, lifestyle, very different to ours. So, you know, we, we've got to try different things to her, but possibly because... You know, just life's different. Mm, yeah. People are different, different things. Yeah, some people find it easy to switch off. Yeah. Some people like to do what would be called these days mindful things mm. to switch off. Another lady, Beth Ste Stehauer. I think, I, sorry Beth if I said that wrong. She just said, wow, this answers a lot. The things I've been feeling for the last 10 years. The latest is forgetting words. We yeah. don't do that. Only daily. And, and things I know and now I can't remember. You know, she yes. know, now know oh, she knows. So frustrating. Yeah. And she just said, thank you for, ladies, for bringing light to, to a condition that's never talked about. Which is, again, what part, why we did it, wasn't it? Because we said it's almost like people are scared to talk about it. Or, yeah. Or it's because it's women, it's um, trivialised, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But thanks again for commenting. And, yeah, we uh, always hope, read them. We hope we've helped a few people along on that uh, podcast. Now, I don't think there's anything else for us, to, trivial stuff for us to talk about, is there? We're just going to go on to funny stuff, possibly. Did you want dreams? Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> listeners, we nearly forgot Sharon's dreams. What's to, what you've been dreaming? Right, I'll pick out a couple for you. I was on trial for, this is what I'm saying about things I listen to, I was on trial for murder. Oh, right, yeah. And I was being held in a kind of big rabbit hutch. <laughs> it would have to be quite a fair sized rabbit hutch, yes, really, wouldn't it? with another accused. Even though you are short. I am short, but it was a big hutch. Yeah. Um, with another accused. Now, I think it might have been Marley, which is my uh, daughter's, daughter's partner. Daughter's partner. Oh, right. Um, but this big rabbit hutch was in my mum's garden. We knew we'd been found innocent when my mum started to deconstruct the hutch. Right. So that's how we knew. <laughs> oh yes, this was a good one. I was in a house. Right. It was a bit neglected, but it was a big old palatial house. Oh. Um, it was neglected. There was a leak in the roof. Um, there was an older man and an older lady and a disabled child lived in this house. Mm -hmm. um, I I offered to help look our look for the leak in the loft. I think I said to them, I used to work in housing, I know where these things yeah. are. Um, and then they informed me that the house used to be quite luxurious and was featured in a 1970s sitcom in which they all featured. Well, and they didn't tell you what the... T this yes, and as soon as they said, oh, the, you know, the, the name of the programme, I yeah. went, oh, of course it was, that's where I knew the house from. Right, so what programme was it? I don't know. Well, you've forgotten now. Well, I don't know if I, I ever registered it. No, that's what I'm saying. So, but they did say... They did didn't. say. Oh. I don't think I Oh, so it's one of those situations where you know they told you, but you just don't... Still don't. It's not real. It is a dream, after all. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't real. Yeah. 
So that was an interesting one as well. I'll give you one more because I have got yep. quite a few at the moment. Save some um, for next time. But I yeah. was out driving. Yeah. Uh, sometimes without looking. Um, You're and, driving a car without looking. Yes. And I drove into an old people's home. Not into the wall. In the door. Because I told you I drive in you buildings You drive into buildings. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's bizarre. So, yeah. So I was in an old people's home. Um, they had very shiny white tile flooring. Okay. And there was a fantastic vending machine in the corner. And what was in the vending machine? Uh, you could get food and toys and it blew cold air in your face if you wanted it to. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> right, so we're having a trip down memory lane this time. We're talking about our childhood and things we used to watch as children. Uh, there's probably going to be children's programs there, but other programs that we remember. We have had to have, of course, being menopausal women, we have had to have a look at Google to remind ourselves of some of them, and it's been quite a revelation. <laughs> well, it's been a trip down memory lane. It definitely it? has, yeah. I mean, there's a mixture. Obviously, we've got, as I say, childhood things and adult things that we remember. Um, and I, I'm really shocked, actually, how many programmes I remember, considering what I'm normally like. Well, we did talk about, we probably watched a lot of telly. I think that was probably peak British telly, wasn't it? 70s, 60s yeah. and 70s, maybe the 80s. There wasn't a lot to do. No, there wasn't. Our parents didn't go out in the evening. Mm. And I wasn't the sort of child, child to be out <coughs> and about all the time either. I was always at home, because mm. I can remember TV being on. Not during the day, as we we were discussing, but I do remember it being on quite a lot in the evening. Yeah, and my parents wouldn't have sat and read a book or anything like that. No, I, was, I, said, I said to you, them. my parents, I don't think there was ever any books in the house that, that were fiction or reading books. They were all, like, you remember once the uh, man used to come around selling encyclopedias? Do you remember them coming door well, to door? I don't remember that. Did your parents have something? Yes, they, they, they weakened. And they had the, um, and then because my dad later on went, did the Reader's Digest and used to have them delivered and you used to get free gifts with them. They we had so them. many gifts at home that were just from Reader's Digest. Yes. Yeah, I'd forgotten about it till now, till we're talking yes. about it. So yeah, they, but they, even those, they didn't, they might have referred them to, to them like we do Google every now and then, but other than that, they were never book people really. No. And we they, used with, to, uh, within uh, that, I just remember the Reader's Digest, we had a whole, section and i've got some of them children's stories that oh. were the hardback and they always just look lovely on the shelf but again we're very rarely yeah. read my, my parents used to buy me books to read i used to like reading children's books um but they weren't readers we did have things called the pear cyclopedias yeah i don't remember I heard they, about them. we're yeah, going off a of tv on the books are, now but aren't they we? were <laughs> sponsored by pear soap oh they actually were so it's the same yes. pears yes no, I don't know. We'll have to look that up for another day. Another, Maybe yeah. we, we have talked about doing a book one, haven't we? But yeah, I mean, it, we're mm. not quite sure how to go about it and what to include, but we'll get there. Mm. So, yeah, so we were talking as well um, about t TV in the early days. I mean, we didn't get a TV until my... I think it, I think it was my first, because I've got two brothers and the eldest brother, I think, so it's so... It was me, my sister, then my brother, and I think it was when that brother was being born, my dad got the TV for my mum as a surprise when she came out. So what year would that have been? That would have been 1969, I think. Yes, I think we got TV around the same time, 68, 69. Mm, I'm sure he's 69 he was born, yeah. Uh, um, people talk about uh, when people in the UK got telly, a lot Posh people with a bit of money got it for the Queen's coronation. Yes, yeah. Which I think it's 56, 58. Yeah, it's I think. Might have to look that up. 58 rings a bell, but anyway, mm. it's, it's irrelevant at yeah. the moment. Yeah, and just trying to give an idea of when TVs. Yeah, a lot of people got it for the 66, or the World Cup, which was held in Britain and obviously. Yeah. Them, so. I don't know why I want to say that. But people in America maybe had TVs earlier. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so, and also we were talking about the fact that the TV wasn't on all day. Yeah. So you'd get TV from what, maybe news in the evening onwards. Yes. And then it, then you started to get programs that you could watch when you come in from school. It was a little bit earlier, yes. wasn't it? Yes. 
I mean, I, I've got Watch With Mother written down, and I mm. think that was maybe midday, maybe a bit later. Oh, you're probably right, actually. I but then the, that the, was probably later on, was it? But, but the telly it, would go off again, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. But it's in with Watch With Mother, it was like Handy Pandy. Oh, yes. Or Andy Pandy, not yes. Handy. Yes. Andy Pandy and Bill, and, course, ben. Bill and Ben and a, the dog one. Spot the dog. Was it? Yeah. it used to but bounce I, around. Like yes. a, it was a puppet, basically, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. but I can't remember the... No, I can't whole family. Name. I'd only got Bill and Ben and Andy Pandy written down. I was a big Andy Pandy fan. But it was very much puppets, wasn't it? Yes. And that's, yeah, so different to now when you think about it's all animated now. That Children now would look back and go, what on earth is that? Yeah. How were you fooled? Yeah, <laughs> but we were, and it was lovely. Oh, dear. Yeah, so we'd get that, but then we were trying to think of about when... Well, I've got here, January 1983 was the first time we had breakfast TV. Yes, in the UK, yes. So that still seems quite late, it does really, doesn't seem it? It does quite late. Was that around the time that we used to have Johnny Vaughan and that doing No, breakfast? that's much later. That's much later, yeah. right. Yeah, I, I think just can't... Uh, morning TV was, was it Frank Boff? And then it was Anne... Oh, yes. And then it was Anne Diamond, wasn't it? Yes. God, and, I've forgotten uh, that. And Selena... Selena Scott was her name. Yeah. Yes, the blonde lady. Yes, yeah. yeah, they were early TV presenters. God. And it was very much um, news, but with the jumper on, rather than a shirt and tie, wasn't it? I think that was the first time. Oh, they'd, time. Gone, they'd gone relaxed, They'd gone cash. Cash, <laughs> bit of cash. Yeah, well, that's... The, yeah. I mean, this is obviously, we're talking about, obviously, British TV, because yes. we, but we'd yeah. love to hear from you what the American Absolutely. TV was like. Mm. I mean, obviously, we can Google it, but it's not the same as hearing it from you. So, yeah, so that was the first breakfast TV. Yes. Uh, and then we were talking about the, it used to shut down at night, didn't it? Yes. You'd sort It'd of sit and wait for the dot, midnight. didn't you? Because yeah. the TV used to go black and then this dot used to yeah. just disappear in the middle and then that yeah. was it, gone. Because, I mean... People saying, I, I, I stayed up till the dot went. So that's it, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so that didn't finish in the UK until 1997. That I just think is incredible because, as I said, I met Duncan then and I, I thought TV was well on its way then. Just And then it was News 24, which was it, you know, BBC itself would shut down, but it would play news. BBC News throughout so, the Something night. cheerful for you to go to bed to, with <laughs> yeah. in your brain. I suppose that's where you got training from. <laughs> well, I where I got my training from. Yeah. But yeah, oh, so it's, um, I just, that was incredible to me. And because mm. one thing I did want to do with that, was, and I forgot, was the test card. I yes. Mean, did, did they have a test card in America? Because we used to have, when the t programs weren't on, we'd have what was called the test card. And it was um, it was de designed or created by this man, and I think it was either his daughter or whatever. Was a little there's a little girl with her toys in the centre. Was she on a chalkboard? Yeah, she got a chalkboard. I think they changed the design slightly mm. over the years, mm. didn't they? But I remember there be I think there was a clown in the picture, which some but people might have found scary. For, and that's why it's called the test card. Yeah. Because my uncle worked for Radio Rentals. So that's the other thing. We used to rent, rent our TVs. Our TVs. We yeah. didn't own them, did yeah. we? Yeah. used to pay so much a, a week for them. Yeah. And it was so the guys fitting a new telly could make sure all the... Sh well, it would have been shades when it was in black and white and then all the colours yeah. were set up when there were no programmes during the day. So if you had your, a new telly installed... Yeah. In the middle of the afternoon, there would have been no programs running. So, in order yeah. to see if he'd set the aerial up properly and your TV was clear, oh, that's, for them to that's what the well, test card was for. Well, I never. Yeah, we'll see because they needed something to. Yeah. Every day's a school day. Every day's a school day. So, getting on with the programs, I mean, I've, I don't know how what my earliest memory is to be perfectly honest so I'm gonna to have to just go through them hmm. if I'd given myself weeks of research and started getting dates I could have got them in date order but what's the point <laughs> we just we'd gonna, only have gone off in the I would have gone off on a tangent anyway yeah so yeah I mean my, my first one for some reason that I just put is blue Peter yes which whether that's a, I don't think that I think that's very much a British thing because even the people in it were very British and speak very good didn't they yes but blue 
Babaloo. <laughs> I don't remember Babaloo being Babaloo in it. Babaloo Peter got exported all over oh, the world. Oh, did it? So it was very popular all over the world. Oh, well, yeah. But basically, it was just three presenters, wasn't it? Yeah. Two, two boys and a girl. I think it was always two boys and a girl. Yeah, and they used to take it in turns to do a craft thing. Or, yes. Yeah, this, yeah, a very, craft. very stark white studio wasn't it but a few shelves about and it's just yeah and they always had animals didn't they yeah They'd oh there's there's so shed. many so many clips on youtube and everywhere isn't there where they had little disasters one of oh. one's always when the elephant did a pee did a pee in the middle of the thing while they were talking yeah. about it and that yeah. but and the one i see one come up on facebook today actually where they was given these clothes to wear <laughs> that was supposed what we were supposed to be wearing in the year two thousand, yeah. and they were bizarre. They were like space plastic clothes, weren't they? Well, they were... the the yellow top he had on reminded me of like those Christmas trees were made <laughs> with the strips. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah, very strange. But anyway, yeah. So I, but we loved if occasionally if I, if we could because they used to try and make craft things a bit like us really things that we got in the house. Well, there was the famous um, the tinsel coat hanger. Oh, yes, that was the Christmas we, advent, wasn't it? Yes, which yeah. was always a white coat hanger covered in tinsel. Yeah, and then there's, there's the washing up bottle, which yes. you, the boys used to make into a rocket, yes. and then that went, in turn went into an advert for fairy, for fairy liquid, liquid did, because the, yeah. the child's watching the mum wanting her to empty this bottle so that he could make a rocket. So, yeah, that was quite... I think Quite there was good. a famous one where they did Tracy Island as well. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was very famous. Mm. But there was a, because um, the BBC was... Um, the BBC? The BBC! <laughs> yeah. It was obviously the first channel was on um, British telly. But then that's there the were... That's the that someone said it because like the Queen used to say it like that, didn't she? BBC, BBC English. BBC English. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. But then there were commercial rivals set up later, wasn't there? An ITV, which was independent television, I think it was. Why we call it ITV? Yeah, I think so. Came later and they often rivaled BBC programmes. And the reason I'm saying that is because Blue Peter's rival was Magpie. Oh, yes. Which was on um, ITV. Yeah, I don't think I put... Oh, I did that. It's next on my list, yeah. Um, which was Mag a fair... Magpie. That sounded One terrible. For sorrow, two, two for joy. Three, three for, for a girl, girl and four for a boy. <laughs> Five for silver, six for gold. Seven for, for a, a secret, secret never to be told. <laughs> don't know why. They're the only memories we have, see. <laughs> way, way, way back. Yeah, and it was a kind of Blue Peter format, wasn't it? I remember more about Blue Peter than I do Magpie, but I did enjoy Magpie. Yes. I always remember the man with the big hair. Yes, he was a very. He looked like Mark Boland, didn't he? Like he did. Kind of, did he? He died way. quite recently, didn't he? I think. I don't know. I've got, I've got a very re Mick, rec Mick, recollection Mick of him from, being on. Mick from Mad. Was he called Mick? Possibly. I think Blue Peter ran before and a lot after. Maybe that's why. Magpie's not so fixed in our yeah, minds. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, one, that obviously, it's in my memory because of what I'm like with my, on my creative side, is... I think he's still alive. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah. I must have news, just seen something slash. about him. Oh, okay. um, he's now 76. Wow. Yeah, the, um, what's it, the art one with the, was it Hart, Tony Hart? What, Tony what was it called? The, there was a name for the programme, wasn't it? Something art? But he, used, he was very much yes. a good, he was a very good artist, and he used to people used to send their drawings into him, and then he'd put them on the wall. And they play a special tune. A special as well. tune, and then he'd show people's drawings. I think that's, when you think about it now as an adult, it was so lovely to do, wasn't it? And he, he had first, in, I was going to say, he first introduced Morph, and Morph went on to have his own program, yeah. didn't he? Morph is a for want of a better word, like a plasticine figure, wasn't he? Yes. That he used to, was animated and, yeah, used to, yeah. and he used to talk to him, didn't he? he yeah, Tony used to talk to him and he'd go, answering him right, back. Hang on, I'm going to find out what the Tony Hart programme was called. Tony Hart. I know, oh, I know it as soon as you say it, but... Hart programme. Take Hart. Take Hart, that's it. I knew there was a T, but I didn't remember the take. Do you know, it didn't run for very long. It ran from 1977 to 1983. Oh. Well, it was obviously very good because we still remember yeah. it. But I loved it and I always wanted to send a picture in. Never did. No. 
Well, I'm going back to earlier memories. I mean, I think my early ones, we said Watch With Mother yeah. and Japandi Bill and Ben. And the others were Trumpton yeah. and Campbell Green, Campbell Wick Green. So did you say, I don't know which one it was, but it's Cam, Campbell Green or Trumpton. Or well, not the same programme, are they? And I was, I was just They may it, have been neighbouring villages. Yes, they could have been. And it's that, the noise, is it? Ding, 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 ding. Or he's, he, and, he, and then he's, he's doing the... What was that thing? I think it was just the titles, wasn't it? Well, there was the a little... name of the, the name of the song, and he used to use like a big, like he used to crank a car up with, yes, wasn't like it? Yes, like a crank. One of those, he'd stand there and he'd just turn that round and round. We're doing the actions, and you can't <laughs> see them. You're missing out. But something used to open, didn't it? Like a, like a. Well, like I thought it flapped over because right, okay. maybe that was a different bit. I think it flapped over where it was the credits, who was it doing the show, and right, everything. Right. Okay. But there was also, like a windmill, wasn't there? You don't think about Windy Miller, there was the wind. I think the well, doors that was in that. Campbellwick Green. Well, I there think. you go, see, I've Windy forgotten Miller. what's there. But oh. yeah, they, were, they must have been our, our age group, were they? I, I just, I was, I want to say they're my children's age group. This is the thing you're thinking of. Oh. Memory's tricky, though, Look, you remember things thing differently, that don't you? That, that was oh, the thing that is. I, there's the thing you're talking about with the crank. That's it, and it used to come up. Used to, see? Yes. So I, did, I was right, but it didn't. I think we you you're we talking both about the end, stories. And I'm talking about the oh, beginning. Possibly. We both got stories. Yeah. We both think of the same thing, but differently. <laughs> so yeah. So he's turning the crank, and then there's like a what yeah, you call like credits, a music. Yeah, the credits came up. Yeah. So a music box opened, but I can't remember what came out of the music box. Is it a music box? This. I this think thing. so because it used to, that used to do sort of that. Meat. Yes. Yeah, the the. That was it. Whatever came out of there was the subject for that day's. Yes. Story. So sometimes oh. it was Windy Miller. Yes. Look, it's turning now. It is like a carousel thing, isn't it? You've not got the music there. I turned it down. Just for a sec. Oh. It's opening up. It's opening up. Who's coming out the top today? Who's that? Mr. Dagenham. <laughs> I only remember Windy Miller. Uh, well, but Trumpton less. was brilliant, and there was the firemen were in Trumpton, weren't they? Yes. Few Brew, Barney McGrew, Cuff, but some some and Grub. <laughs> Something like that. Might yeah. have to look that up. As usual, <clears throat> children's I know rhymes it was often rhymes. Yeah, Captain Flack was the captain. Oh, I don't remember that. And the reason I remember that is because my dad was because of fireman. your dad, yeah. The firemen all used to watch Trumpton at the station. No <laughs> <They were> kidding. <laughs> I bet they had a good laugh. But my dad also had a Captain Flack hanging in the car, <laughs> which is great. So I do remember that. I oh. loved those. Another one I used <clears throat> to adore was How. Oh. Yeah, they used That's to be. Culture, wasn't it? There was about now. <laughs> yeah, there's about four of them, wasn't there? They sat at the desk and they would yeah, tell you how things worked. Them. Yes. I absolutely loved it. It was the fascinating. Science. Um, yeah. oh. And they used to do how, like as if they were Indians, wasn't it? Yes. How? Oh. Before they started. Yeah, so yeah. How do we make? Yeah. So and so. How is salt produced? Yeah. And as a kid, you you didn't know this stuff, no, did you? No, so it was, no. it was. It was. I mean, it was What's excellent. Why didn't they do something like What's that? His name? The main guy with I the glasses. I want to say Derek someone, but it probably oh, wasn't. I was thinking anyway. Reg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. But yeah, oh, I loved how I didn't yeah. have that on my list. I did have Cracker Jack. Yes, I've got that as well. It's Friday. Was it five o'clock? It's Friday. Is it's it five. Was it something like five to five or five something like that? Five. I want to it's say it was Jack. Yeah. Number one, one I remember the most is that if you answered a question right, you'd get a prize. Yeah. But you had to hold them all in your arms, didn't you? Yes. And then if they you could got, be stupid things, couldn't yes. they? Yes. And then if you got a question wrong, they would give you a cabbage, which you also had to hold. So yeah. you had a combination of these, like, games and jigsaws and cabbages, and you had to hold as many as you could. And it had, yeah, and if you hung on to them, you basically got all the prizes, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. It so was, I loved that. that How program was with Jack, it was created by Jack Hargreaves. Jack Hargreaves. Fred Dynage. Fred Dynage. That's him. What did you say? I did. I said Derek or someone. And I said Reg. 
Derrick oh, Wedge, yes. Dinage. <laughs> and that was with John Miller, Marion and Marion Davis. I don't remember that. Well, I don't yeah. remember that. Yeah. So yeah, no, that was absolutely fantastic. That was fantastic. I used to really look forward to that. How? Mm. Again, as I said, they're in no particular order because I couldn't yeah, remember. You that. Go, you go next. But I've got the monkeys. Hey, or the, the monkeys. As you can tell, we can't remember all the words. I've got a feeling that was a weekend programme. Yeah, I think it was Saturday morning, I think, or maybe Sunday even. Yeah. But loved it, loved Davy Jones. Yes, and Peter... Oh, Peter, no, is it Nolan? Don't know, loved I think that. it was Peter Nolan. I mean, they were, um, like, first created boy band, really, weren't yeah. they? They were put together for that programme. Yeah. Davy Jones was short and cute. And, yes, yeah. yeah, I did love the monkeys. Yeah. What um, you got next? Next one I've got is Cat Weasel. Yeah. You, you're not convinced. I, I, was it a scarecrow? Or I'm probably thinking of the other scarecrow one. No, Cat Weasel was the one. Oh, I think I've got the right one. No, I, I know the name, and I do, but I can't think what he was. Hang on. The one I'm thinking of is the one where he was a kind of Merlin type creature that um, somehow managed to, um, in medieval times, um, see I've, I've always liked um, time travel. Mm. Um, oh, there we go. Um, Cat Weasel is a magician from the time of the Normans who is cast into the future by magic. So See, I don't, can't have watched it very much, that's all I can think. He arrives with this family as a kind of, yeah, he's obviously Norman times, it says there, medieval times, um, so he's got no understanding of the modern world, and he's trying to get back, but he can't remember the spell he did or whatever to get back. Did he have, he had a bit of a Merlin look about him? Yes, With yes. a moustache and a long beard. A long beard. Yeah. See, I still say telling bone for telephone. Oh, did he say that then? Because he used was, to say that. He didn't understand it. Yeah, telephone. so to yeah. him it was the telling bone. Which actually, you can see, sense. can't you? Yeah. So I used yeah. to like Cat Weasel. So well, was that where my enthusiasm for time travel came from? It's from quite possible. I don't think I watched anything like that, or that I remember again. No, you're thinking of the Scarecrow one. Yeah, what was um, that called? Oh, God. Scarecrow TV. With Aunt Sally. Yes. Wurzel Gummidge. Wurzel Gummidge. Yeah. That was may have quite, even that been the again. same actor. I mean, I don't know if that's the right era, though, is it? Wurzel Gummidge. I think that might be a bit later. Maybe it was more for my younger brothers. I don't know. Another was uh, talking about when we go to cartoons, I think I remember Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo! Oh. That's a new version of that. Oh, late is that 70s. Now? Oh, was it? Oh, well, um, there you yeah, go. Yeah, 79. So maybe I wasn't watching it then because yeah. I was teenage and. Mm. Yeah. And beyond that, yeah. Yeah, so Scooby Doo was Scooby -Doo. Used, used to be quite funny, silly, but it pesky it's kids. one of those things that I used to watch but get irritated by very quickly. So I must have seen it as I got into teen thinking, mm. why am I watching mm. this? Mm. <laughs> Didn't do a lot of cartoons, I must have No, met. I don't Road think. Runner was another one I liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and uh, Pink Panther was another one, remember that? Yes. It's again probably it's probably the same era, maybe we didn't remember it but didn't watch it very much. Mm. Next one I've got goes back a bit again is play school. Not my era. I don't think that was uh, my era. I think that was more my kids, I think. See check on it, but I don't play school. Right, I'm checking now. What with um the looking through the round window. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting to find out when that started because I don't know, I remember it, but I don't know if I remember it just through my kids watching it. Oh. It says it's Australian. Oh. Australian? They uh, weren't Australian when we watched it. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Play School ran from April 64. Wow. Until March 88. Oh. So I must have seen it and... Maybe, and maybe it was on for my younger brothers or something. But, yeah. but obviously I remember the, the dolls and you had uh, Dougal and look through the square window. Dougal was Magic Roundabout. Oh, Dougal was Magic Roundabout, so you remembered another yes. one through that. Um, Poppy Jemima. That's it, Jemima. Humpty. Humpty, I made a Humpty. Little Ted and Big Ted. Yes, that's right. And they used to take him on trips. They did. 
put them to bed. The Say old, good night to them. The older one was Play Days. Oh, right, yeah. Brian Kent in it. God, yes. Yeah. But, yeah, I used to watch Play School. And you, used to, you have to guess which window we'd be looking through today. Yeah. So it's the round window, the square window. You didn't get anything oh, if you got the right window, but you are happy with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> So nice, I used to watch play school. God. I'm going on to more of an adult thing now, but I, for some reason, used to love it. Bonanza. Well, I had Virginian down, which is very similar. Which was cowboy. What was that called again? Virginian. Yes. Yes. And I haven't I got it on my list, I don't think, but I do remember. I think I used to watch them with my granddad. Because he liked all the cowboy things. Oh, did he? Yes, yeah, so I used to watch oh. that with my granddad. Along with the wrestling on a Saturday. I've got some more children ones. Oh, right. Okay. So I've got a series of puppet ones here, which was Thunderbirds. Oh, God. That was, Stingray. Yeah. I didn't... It was on. Let's put it that way. Wow, well, yeah. Again, I is, this where my brothers. is this where my space, space. And science fiction <laughs> thing started? So you watched it avidly? Yeah, and the one I really liked more than those two was Captain Scarlet. Captain Scarlet. I think I was a little bit in love with Captain Scarlet. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's a bit pervy, really. It's a puppet. <laughs> and I was a small child. Yeah. And he was a grown man. <laughs> so you had a crush on Captain I had Scarlet, a crush on really. Captain Scarlet. Yeah. <laughs> but Stingray um, was the one underwater, wasn't it? And they used to sing at the end. They used to sing Marina. Yeah, yeah, Marina, yes. Marina. No, Maria. wrong. Was go Marina. I'm going on the wrong film now. Marina, because oh, she was underwater. Sorry, yes. She was underwater. Um, and I've got Lassie. Yeah, no, that, see, that's all around the same time as Bonanza and that, isn't it? I mean, I went off on a tangent just now, but Bonanza, I love, was it Hoss? Yes. It was the big one, his name was Hoss. And and what's his, what's his name from... Joe. Was it Joe? Joe from... What's his name? Joe something. But he was the... Little House on the Prairie, wasn't he? He was the dad. See, that's yes. nothing on my list, I think. Oh, talk so, of which, yeah. Come so, on. yeah, so I, I... It was something about that I used to like, but I think it was because of Joe. I used to like watching Joe because he yes. another cute face. Yes. There was another one, wasn't there? I couldn't think of it. There was Virginian Bonanza, and there was another one, which was the name of the ranch or something. Something Corral or... God, yeah. And I think I used to watch them up. My Why do I want to say the OK Corral? Because that's a bit of a saying, anyway. Oh, was it? I don't think it was There that, you go, though. it's not that then. Yeah, I think it was the name of the place. <coughs> I've yeah. got Bewitched. No, can't remember watching Bewitched. Really? I mean, I know of it, but I can't remember sitting watching it. Because that's the one where she used to twitch her nose. This is where we're different, Jan, isn't it? Yeah. In that I was already into science fiction, and I'm space really, and time and travel. I, and and I, I'm into quite magic and witches and stuff. Yes. <laughs> More ladylike. <laughs> Next one's more man, more manly. I just remember it being on it probably because of my mum and dad. Mission Impossible. Yes. So it's nothing like the, the films now, is it? No, but no. But it was very. Is that the one that you spy, Wasn't it? This is the voice of the Mister Ons. Was that Mission Impossible? No. Was that the Man from Uncle? Oh my God! I don't Who know. Who did the Mister Ons? You carry on. I'll I don't think that's either, is it? Where did I get that oh. from? Oh. Way we're going, we're going to have to have a part two on this one. This is the voice so of the Mr. Talk about. Oh, that was Captain Scarlet again. Yeah, I thought it didn't seem the right programme. So the Mr. Rons, yeah. Oh, that was Captain Scarlet's enemy. <laughs> I'm going to have to play a bit of Captain Scarlet now, sorry it's come up. So it's like cloning. Yes. Yeah. Who knew? Oh, so it's nothing to do with Mr. Impossible. No. Uh, I Dream of Jeannie. Um, I had Dream of Jeannie on my list as well. But I was a bit in love with... Um, oh, God. What's his name? Who was her husband in the end? 
Oh yeah, I can't remember the yeah, actor. Because he but... did Dallas. He's the guy from Dallas. He was JR in Dallas. Was he? Yes. Well, I never, I wouldn't have said I was into him. Oh, but he was young in I Dream of Jeannie, wasn't he? Yeah, I don't know why I had a different face in mind, but I think you're right. Yeah, J.R. Ewing, you're thinking of, aren't yes, you? Yes, and yeah. it's the same actor. Larry well, Hagman. Larry Hagman. Well, I never. Well, there you go. So, yeah, that was, that was another one that was quite sweet. 1965. Another good feel type thing, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Um, I did Lassie, didn't I? Yeah. Um, oh, Lassie was just lovely. Cause yeah. you, and you always had to be ready to cry at the end, didn't you? Everybody yes. cried at Lassie. Yes. Lassie? Lassie? Because <laughs> we got Lassie up the road, I'm getting confused. Lassie, Lassie, Lassie the dog. dog. Lassie. Yeah, yeah, I was so lovely. Oh, oh, I just thought of one. Skippy. Skippy, yep. And what's, what's the other one? Skippy and... The dolphin. Yeah. What was the dolphin called? Oh my God, what's the dolphin called? But they were all on the same theme in that they'd... They go... What's that? You say it's, skip? It's a, little, a little girl or boy is sort of just taking them under their wing, yes, as it were, yeah. looking after them. And flipper! They even, flipper! <laughs> flipper! Flipper and Skippy were very similar. Yes. In that it was, um, oh, what's that you say? There's a boy trapped down a mine and we must follow you? Yeah. It's like that, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. And everyone was looking at them like they're mad. How did you just get that from that? Yeah. But yeah, all those kind of magical... Um, <laughs> Perceptive pets. Obviously, Lassie was more able to, to rescue people because he could pull them about or to, to pull people there. Whereas poor old Dolphin, he was flipper, he was stuck in the sea, wasn't and he? And I'm not sure Skippy was much use either. S no, no, Skippy just did a lot of... He did. And talked to them and they seemed to know what Skippy, he was saying as well. Skippy, 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 Skippy the, the bush, bush kangaroo. kangaroo. <laughs> Why can we not remember others. something that happened yesterday? <laughs> we can sing songs... <laughs> That yeah. literally 50 years ago. Yeah, I know. Bizarre yeah. the way the brain works. Right, I think we should wrap, because of being the time, we should okay. wrap this one up now. We didn't think we'd have enough, did we? No, but we're going to do a part two. Okay. So, I'll, um, so we're going to we're going to wrap this one up here because there's there's so much more to talk about, and we've already done about. Hopefully, hour. you'll be interested enough that you'll tune in again for part two. Whether that'll be the next one or whether we'll spread it out, I don't know. Same as the idioms. We haven't finished the idioms yet either, have we? So we'll say goodbye for now and oh. see you next time. Bye.